Hi, my name is Zach Corrin. I'm a GA for the strength conditioning department here, and I'm, I am responsible for creating the athlete wellness monitoring system. Today, we're going to go over the wellness report that you would get from it, and we are going to look specifically at women's soccer from 10 14 2020. Um, shout out to women's soccer. They fill it out every single day. Um, we're able to get really good, reliable data because of it, and we're able to help their team better. So good job. We're gonna start here by looking at the first four columns. We're gonna look at injury status and participation. So this kind of gives us a snapshot what the athlete is doing inside the weight room and outside the weight room. If it's green, it means that they are good to go. Yellow means that they are limited and red means that they're out. So this is really good for us to know what they're doing out on the field if they're on their way back from an injury um, and then what they are doing in the weight room. So the next four columns are readiness variables, and we're going to go to readiness score because it's easier to start there. Readiness score is the cumulative score of the three previous columns, so our three readiness variables of stress, sleep quality, and muscle soreness. So you want to see this number that is below it as close to 30 as possible. The higher the number, the more prepared they are for the day. The lower the number, the less prepared they are. So going back now to stress, Stress is inversely scored. So higher the number, the less stressed they are. The lower the number, the more stressed they are. So this first athlete right here, 9.0, they are not stressed. However, we go down this athlete with a 5.0, they are moderately stressed. So we may want to watch them for a bit. Now I will note that this person is colored in red. They are colored in red because this means that they are one standard deviation below their seven day average. So it means that this is an unusual score and that if this continues, we should take a look at them. If this cell were to be highlighted green, which you see in a lot of other places, it means that they're one standard deviation above their seven day average. So that means that their score was unusually good. And so we should highlight those as well. Now, sometimes a score may be low, but it's not highlighted. Case in point, the person right below it. This 5.0 that's not highlighted means that this was their seven day average. And this is kind of concerning. If someone is moderately stressed for seven days, then we need to have a talk with them to see how much we can help them, point them in the right direction. Moving on to sleep quality. Sleep quality is higher the score, the better. So 10 is perfect, great night's sleep. One is I was up all night. Muscle soreness, inversely ranked. So higher the number, the better off they are lower the number, the worse off they are. So more sore, less sore. Um, so you would wanna always see this number as high as possible because that means they're less sore. Going on to the last three columns, total daily RPE. RPE stands for rate of perceived exertion and the total daily RPE is a measure of how active that athlete was that day. So higher the number, the more rigorous their tasks were and how, and uh, they have more activity. So if you want to have a really hard day, you want to see this number up. If your goal is to have a rest day, then this number should be low. Um, so that would be something to keep in mind as you move forward. Duration. Uh, this is just what they report for how long their sessions were. And then total daily SRPE. This is how we are going to track athlete load. Um, so the SRPE is duration times that RPE. So this 840 is coming from the 120 times seven. This is a great way for us to figure out if there are spikes in an athlete's training load or if there's a dip, because either way we wanna find that happy balance between the two. As we move down, we're gonna see, we get averages, the team average going across for every single metric that provides a number, but then also class averages. These class averages can change to be positional groups if you would like, so if you have those, send them our way. Um, I use positional groups with one of my other teams that uses this system and it's wonderful because we're able to pinpoint which groups are working a little bit harder than they should be um, and allows us to alter our training plan because of it. At the bottom here are two graphs. This graph on the right, this SRPE versus readiness score will always be this, these two variables. What it does is that SRP is that training load and the readiness score is how prepared they are for that day. So what you don't want to see is that black line above these red bars. That means we're overreaching. We will always want to see them right at the top or right below it, right, right below the top of the red bars. 
However, if we reach out a little bit, that's fine. We just don't want to see this consistently happening as it is on 1010. Then this graph on the left can be customized to whatever metric you would like. Just talk to your coach about it to figure out what best suits you. Um, again, just you would want to be smart in that one graph is not overreaching the other. So this is our wellness report. It gives us a snapshot of the day of how the athletes are feeling. And the next thing we'll go over is the practice report.